How are the lovebirds? Heart rate just slowing down a little, I think. That's good. Mother's helper. A girl hitching her way down to Florida needs some protection. <laughs> yeah? That's what you're doing? Yeah. That's what I was doing before every machine in the world went into maximum overdrive. Props. Oh yeah. I brought props finally for today's episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you because got, I'm, you all, got I'm a little show and tell. I'm all. It's not so much a show and tell, but I'm always out of props. You you always have them ready. I have stuff at hand. My. Um, That's because all my stuff is crammed into this room. That's why. <laughs> well, I mean, this room is like, like I said, you can see the door here, the the doorway. That's where the room ends. <laughs> so, we've got the video game collection behind me. We've got the art books and other video game and comics and graphic novels, but all the movie stuff is downstairs in the yeah. theater. In, in the theater. In the theater. In the home in theater. The, in the in the in the theater, sir. So I have to go get it. So um, yeah, I brought I brought I brought some props ready um, for for a little bit of discussion. Which I've noticed I've noticed with the pod that I love I love our intro like where we we don't talk about the episode so much just to begin with. We just. Mm -hmm. What we've been doing, maybe what we got, horror stuff related, a little bit of news yeah. here and there, you know, just get them in, get them involved. Yeah, it's a good little but preamble. I've noticed while editing, they're getting longer. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I still, okay, I still love it. I still love it. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a fun little bit. I, I also, I, mean, I don't, I don't really have anything this week, so. You don't? Oh my word! That's I guess. Not true. I do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I I also noticed as well that I need like a, a podcast notebook. Like it's all well and good having notes on my phone. But I need a notebook mm. here on the desk because I realized like I tried to start a feature like two months ago about this week in history of horror. Like, oh yeah. Came out, and then that just sort of stopped, didn't it? That's gone. <laughs> that sort of just <laughs> stopped. So um, yeah, like there were a few other things I wanted to, I, I feel like I, brought to the table and then just didn't do the next week so yeah need a need a business book yeah this business um yeah just you'll be able to set it out then that in like a diary form so it'll have that section in there and you can say ah need something need something for in that oh you've gone a bit I blurry mean, sir i have gone a little bit blurry gone out of focus oh you know what it's because i've been messing with that cam for uh you've been screwing around you've been farting around sir or robocop it <laughs> hey i have that's weird i have a note relating to robocop onto the, about today's episode oh really okay I do, which we'll get to down the line um speaking of the podcast though all right firstly welcome back to the podcast one and all <laughs> there we go <laughs> Welcome back to the Dreadcast, folks. One and all, myself, Tom, and the lovely Aiden. How are you doing? Who is disappearing into the ether as we speak. He's about to it's get... It's getting in dark, isn't it? It's getting, am I, am I is, preempting? No, I'll put a light on now. Yeah, no it is, I mean, it is up here. It's grim up north, isn't it? Yeah, but you're closer to the sun up north, right? No, it's that, closer to the land that, of ice and snow. And... Oh, that's true. The ice wall. <laughs> you're closer to the... The biggest tangent ever here. Winter is coming. I, d I don't suppose you saw, uh, I don't know if you ever saw on the internet this week, um, Flat Earthers have posted what they believe the map is. And it, oh, uh, no, uh, I have not seen this. The map of outside the ice wall. Oh, okay. The lands outside the ice wall. Right. It's, 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 it basically may as well have been in the subreddit of world building. It's Probably ridiculous. A little, a little quick Google. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, why well, used to pop in a goog? Um, yeah, welcome back to the Dragcast, one and all, everyone. This is episode forty-nine. We are so close now to the big half a century, and that's going to feel nuts. Um, but quickly, last week's episode, species had a good.
good, great load of fun doing it. It's doing great numbers. That's Thank good. you to everyone that has downloaded it and listened to it. Greatly appreciate it. Um, I know two people that specifically listen to it. Uh, there are three people. Uh, uh, Andreas in, in Spain. Fun in... Germany. Sp- Germany. Look at, look at this. We're spreading across the continent mm-hmm. that we're not allowed to go to anymore. Um, and I believe Lang- Langers, uh, a lovely commenter on YouTube. I'm not sure where you are from, sir, but thank you if you're listening to this. Thank you for listening and everyone else. Um, have you have you found the, the map yet? I found this square and stationary earth. I guess it's not it's not that. I'm going to um, find it. I'm going to find I mean, it because it's mad. These, these people are crazy. These people are wild. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, a lot of it just looks like Discworld fan art. <laughs> yeah, it... it, it... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am half uh, expecting to see Fred the Weatherman jumping around in the Liverpool dock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, maybe we, we shouldn't talk about him, right? Oh, is it not another one? I think he. Oh, I found it. Well, was we'll he? Oh, I yeah. found it. Oh, uh, well, th- this flat Earth uh, map just looks. All- yeah. Okay. I- now, obviously, none of these maps are hundred percent legit. Obviously, no, no. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not sure if this has been, shall we say, confirmed by the community of flat earthers, or it's just one oh, okay. guy that thinks. But have a look at this. We've got a rogue. Look at this bo- flat earther with his crackpot crack theories. <laughs> Look at this bollocks. This looks like a video game map. This looks like a Final Fantasy map or a Witcher map. Just waiting for this to look. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. Look how it big looks it like is. like something from Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Oh my days. So, they're obviously the ice wall was the edge, but now they're saying there is, in theory, no edge. There's the world beyond the ice wall. The the world There's, the um, walls of Asgard. Yeah. The scorched waste. <laughs> One island called Nemo. The um, frozen waste. <laughs> and the abyssal ocean. Oh my god. This guy is just he's look, he's he's read too many fantasy look. novels and just crammed it all together. Look, okay, you thought Africa was big? No. Africa ain't shit compared to the Isles of Anubis. Or Atlantis the Isle of there. Isis. <laughs> Atlantis is on there. Yeah. The solitaire ocean. <laughs> Where are the Black Jack Islands? Is, is that what? What is that? The, is that the Atlantic, the Atlantean Ocean, and Atlanta, uh, Atlantis isn't in it? Um, you got the Atlantic Ocean, our one, the real one, and then. No, no, let's say two o'clock. It's all, all that was that one you're talking about. All, all, how you and how out, out, tower you and oh, I'll tell you. And I thought it was Atlantis. It's got Gemini the... and Pitatia. Pitatia. There we go. Yeah, okay, okay. I mean, I... even. <laughs> <laughs> saying it does look very much like a video game map or a fantasy like map or and i you know i love a fantasy novel that has a map in the front that that's usually gives it a few extra points but i wouldn't read this it looks it still looks shit <laughs> it looks rubbish <laughs> it's really bad isn't it i mean i feel oh, bad dear. for horror i feel bad for horus look at that <laughs> north it's just it's an island within a lake <laughs> yeah so what's the what's supposed what's the brown supposed to be? The mountain dirt. I don't know. Mountain. The mountain the mount- ring the is mount- just called ring. mountain ring. Okay. Yes, the mountain <laughs> ring. Um, what I'm curious to know is how they've discovered this. Mm. If this now, if this is real, right? Because it you, it hey. It's right? not Tom. It's not. <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> How do you, because, how do you, how do you, because what? Because of a lot of other reasons. How do you, no. That's, that's not I mean, I haven't personally been to space, but I trust those photographs more than I trust this monstrosity. 
This guy has seen um, the walls of Asgard, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's obviously a fan of mushrooms. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I, extra, I'm, extra medicinal activities. I apologize, folks. I'm not really sure. I can't remember. It was about five minutes ago how we got on this tangent. How I got on this tangent. There's I mean, no you way. just said I've got a tangent to go on. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 that's exactly how we got there. <laughs> That's how we do our podcast. So I've got some madness to show you. You know, fair enough. Basic folks, it's horror adjacent. If you're a big Stephen King fan and you like the film Maximum Overdrive, which is today's episode, I'd skip ahead about half hour. <laughs> that's where you're really going to kick off. Okay, unless you want to hear two grown men talking about an absolutely bollocks, uh, flat earth. I mean, I don't have, I don't have much. More no, to okay. Go. <laughs> I don't have much more. I do have one question. Is yeah. the is the fo- is the the photograph the fo- <laughs> <laughs> is, is the picture square because that's where those other bits end, or is there supposedly more to it than that? Yeah, it's not a disc shape. It's a mini disc shape. It, it's a mini disc. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a floppy disc. It's a floppy disc um, shape. One of the old big ones. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. I hope, I hope, I hope they've, he's got somebody looking after him, whoever's come up with this. So, I hope his carer's <laughs> seen this. Oh, you know, well, well, that was he's fun. He's making good use of those crayons. <laughs> yeah, and doing some really bad Photoshop work, like stretching these islands. They they look so stretched, these, these images. Anyway. Um, anyway, um... I mentioned yeah, we're, 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 today's episode, episode forty-nine, is on maximum overdrive. I can't not <laughs> think of Homer singing Max Power when I say the words maximum overdrive. Um, so we'll be getting onto that una momento. Before we do that, do check out the Dreadcast on Spotify. Even though, I mean, you probably already listened to it on these, but do just if you haven't clicked the follow button or the the rating, just go ahead and tap, 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 and do that as well. Um, Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Podbean, and YouTube, all by searching the Dreadcast and the social meds, which are beneath our beautiful faces here, and the official social meds of the underscore Dreadcast on Instagram and Twitter. Got it. Go, Second go. edge now. That's just coming out. And mate, you can mate. also send us a direct message to our mailbag. You're going to check the mailbag, Tom. I've the dreadcast pod at gmail.com. Send us What's a, that even email, email address? seems old-fashioned now, don't you think? I want letters. Letters. We want actual post. We have another letter for fun. Yeah! It's bloody massive! Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to start reading this before we come on. I'm going to vet, I'm gonna have to vet these, aren't I? Mm-hmm. Bullet point. Okay. We'll get through. The, we'll, 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 do the, we'll do the mailbag now, seeing as it's uh, it's quite a package we've got oh, here. Oh. Bless you, Aiden. Oh, bless me. Thank you. Uh, before I write you another email, so Tom can pronounce my nickname absolutely right. Yeah. And I think he did it wrong again. Yeah, probably. Von the how. Von the how. There we go. All right, pick that one off. There we go. All, there we go. All done. Yep. After I listened to the episode about House by the Cemetery, uh, I f- tried to find and watch the film. I have to admit, it was quite late, so I ended up watching Last House on Cemetery Lane. I cannot recommend that one. <laughs> it's just trash. Trash acting, trash scenery, and plot so thin it's annoying. I have never heard of... I've heard I of Last got... House on the Left, but this sounds like yeah, a... Yeah, Last House on Cemetery Lane. I've got a feeling I have seen... It sounds like um, a parody film. I've seen it, and it it looks... And I've not seen it as in watched it. I mean, I've seen it coming up on Amazon or whatever. Um, oh and I think the the cover the cover art will tell you the... Uh... That is what um, my, my favourite YouTube channel, which I've mentioned before, uh, other than the Dreadcast YouTube channel, uh, the boys at Red Letter Media did a video not long ago called um, Watch Bait, where they were basically mm-hmm. describing these sort of films. Yeah. That you pick a word, just pick a word, say exorcism, and you'll find hundreds of films where yeah. the, exorcism yeah, yeah, of, yeah. the exorcism of or something that begins with shark, shark this, shark that, mm-hmm. shark. This is a this is a watch bait film. 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, this par you know, Paranormal Activity was a huge breakout success. So yeah. you've, you, then you've got Paranormal, like, pastime, mm. um, Nativity, Paranormal, just anything that vaguely sounds like it, just basically, yeah, it's clickbait. Or, you know, it's it's what your grandma would buy you. I thought mm. you like that film. I bought I bought that film that you like. Like eh, not quite right there, Grand, but I appreciate the thought. Hey, fun fact, I once bought my sister Kangaroo Jack for Christmas. That's What's a real it? thing, isn't it? Oh yeah. And that um she's nine years older than me, so this she would have been like thirty or something at this point. All right. <laughs> it did not go down well. <laughs> and it was a serious present. Anyway, back to the email. Uh, I also listened to your episode about species and watched the film. Or I'm still watching it as I'm writing this mail. I agree with several points. The empath was pretty poor, really poor, poorly written. But I understand why he didn't sense Syl in the scene in Robbie's garden. Because she was her alien self most of the time. And he is definitely not a know-it-all in the sense I... My eyes are really bad. I'm going to have to just control <laughs> scroll there we go let's make this text bigger here we oh, go oh dear dude my my notes on this screen are in size 20 on the on <laughs> google document <laughs> all right empath pretty poor um here we go he was. that's why uh pseudo xavier is pissed at him one moment and tells him to give something that helps him the insights he's given are at least pretty obvious to me and are quite logic they have done him a disservice i think he could have been a cool character uh, and his episode, quote unquote, episode in the hotel when Doc Ock is banging Seal. Good choice there, banging. Um, <laughs> I would actually say it's the other way round. I think Seal was banging him. Mm. Technicality. Uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it said drugs enhance paranormal talent, so I get what they're aiming at. But as I said before, they could have done it better. Yes. So agreeing with the empath um, logic. About Seal, I feel for her. Even after the kills, I mean, she is born into a world. I can already agree with this. Born into a world she doesn't belong, stacked with instincts that are not uh, really her own, have to be fulfilled, that are primal. Yeah, I believe we, I think we mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got that sort of predatory, animalistic instinct. Yeah, yeah. She surely can sense when something is wrong, like the diabetic, like be, uh, danger being near, or uh, just a hitman guy having sex takes her to a while to understand. I agree with her mimic a lot. She obviously learns a lot like that her learning reminded me a lot of the fifth element did we mention that because i feel like when i watched i looked at the young seal when she's in the the chamber it's mm -hmm. very fifth element -y, it's I very like fifth it. element style i don't i don't recall mentioning it specifically but i can't argue with that there's no not at all a, there's definitely a, a bit of crossover with lilu and her sort of other way like um multi-pass yeah mila jovovich played it um Cor um corbin dallas multi-pass uh she definitely big learns battle. big battle <laughs> she definitely learns and understands what she's doing it's a bit sad that the alien is reduced to primal instinct to reproduce him all in all i like the film but i also agree the ending is a bit too long yeah I, I believe you said that that it yeah it, it has was, its ending that was my main kind criticism. of tries to that was my main criticism yeah. just they just drag out that sort of action chase sequence at the end um and finally besides that i have a gaming recommendation but i think it's more for the lovely half troll so this is for Ooh. you bramble Ooh. the mountain king oh yeah i've been really wanting to play this he's very yeah, excited fun for how he's very excited right now it's very cool it is very yeah. cool um i've not played it yet but i've watched a few people play it and it's um What's it like? I mean, Little little Nightmares is probably the easiest comparison to make. It's that sort of style platformer. Um, and oh, it's yeah, set... Nice. Is it Finnish folklore? Uh, uh, Swedish, she says here. Swedish. So, so it's... Yeah, so uh, you. I don't know if you're a kid that's drunken down and transported into this world or you're part of that world anyway. But yeah, you basically, you know, find your way moving through these areas there's a there's a big scene which i think was shown a lot in a lot of the trailers where you're traversing a lake mm. and there's a creature it sort of spots you in the background and comes through and it's this big sort of ginny green teeth um monster swamp hag type yeah creature that's after you yeah it looks very cool looks very cool um i haven't played it yet 
I'm waiting for it to come down in price a little bit on Steam because I've heard it's quite short, and I think the current price tag versus length of game is a little bit off balance for me to actually pull the trigger on it just yet. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. For people I've spoke, I've spoken to a couple of people that have played it and say it's very good, and it certainly looks very charming and interesting. But uh, yeah, I'm it's, waiting. Um... I'm waiting for it to come on to us, come on to sale. It's uh, the developer's second game, uh, Dim Frost mm. Studios, they're called. So, wow. A uh, couple of cheap keys on uh, Kingwin. Uh, oh, okay. Steam keys. Might have a look. So, have a look at that. Might have, um, a look. Might have a look. But yeah, it looks cool. Swedish folklore horror game, in my opinion. Very beautifully made. Has a bit of... Uh, <laughs> Little nightmares. <laughs> it has a bit of a little nightmares it's, vibes. It's there very, we go. <laughs> it's a bit, I think anybody that's played a little nightmares and then saw Bramble would would recognise that sort of style of of gameplay. I mean, I guess if you want to compare it to an old uh, like Limbo as well, it's got it's oh, that kind yeah. of yeah. Um, it's got that kind of sort of tone and mood to it, and the fact that you're kind of helpless and vulnerable, and you, it's about problem solving, yeah, puzzle solving and problem solving to progress rather than combat and. Yeah, Love me some Limbo. Yeah, Limbo's very good. And Inside, their follow-up game. Uh, yeah, Inside. that's also excellent with the mm. weird squishy flesh ball. Yes. Um, <laughs> I watched a Let's Play of a German YouTuber the other day and fell in love with the game. Maybe one of you two will give it a go. I know who will probably give it a go. I us two. think I can. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I will be playing. I'll try and pick it up and I might do a little stream of that one at some point. Looks cool. Anyways... Love you both. Feel hugged if you like it and stay spooky. Uh, thank you very much, Fun. For Wonderful. How. Thank you very Nailed much. Thank you very much. Love you too. And thank you for the mail. We greatly appreciate it. It's nice to... I actually really love these long um, emails that include loads of different things because it's like having a conversation with you through the podcast. Even yeah, not definitely. Here. That, yeah, that's, that's cool. So, yeah, keep sending them in. Be great to read them every now once in a while. And anyone else that wants yeah. to send them in, go for it. Um... What's that email again? You can mail us at the dreadcastpod <laughs> at gmail.com. Yes, uh, we would love to hear from you with your thoughts, opinions, recommendations, and uh, just, you know, just to say hi. It's yeah, it's you... nice to get messages, nice to get mail. But yeah, like I was just saying, email fe feels like snail mail now. You know what I mean? It feels like mm. uh, it's an old fashioned thing to do. Whereas, like, you know, d DMs on. Well, not even Twitter anymore. <laughs> like, we're moving on to threads and other things. But well, I mean, um, if you want something quick, like seeing as I'm doing the you know the TikTok and the Instagram, um, Aiden has actually I, he didn't want me to bring this up, but he's actually got the Dreadcast phone number now. So if you want to <laughs> if you want to ring and e uh, message Aiden anytime, twenty four seven, he's always at the phones. Oh seven. Um, <laughs> there, there's, there's a bit of God, man. Like I said about this intro, like. I've got, got things to talk about before we even talk about the film. Oh, let's um, get into it. Ramble on. So, I brought some, brought some things up from the theatre, right? Yeah. And have I... I feel like I, I, I'm losing my memory these days, as long as my sight. I'm old. Not as old as you. Have I shown you <laughs> this before? Thanks. Uh, oh, no, you haven't. That looks lovely. Is that the 4K? This is the 4K Collector's Edition Folks Ooh. of the Vich. I love and the Vich. This is beautiful. And um the lighthouse just got this treatment as well, which I really want. Big yeah, I've not seen fan. not seen it yet, but um uh, but yeah, like his other stuff, so I'm keen to check that one out at some point. This I picked this up because I was bringing some more stuff up and I was like, I have I shown him this because I know that he's a big fan of the witch. Yeah. As am I. I like to live this, deliciously. This book, look how thick that book is. <gasps> Oh, that is very nice. Look at all this stuff that's in it. Look at the designs. Oh, we got... It's basically yeah, an art costumes. book behind the that scenes. That is excellent. Some good old woodcuts in there. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Um, nice. We also... Um, yeah, You get the postcards. They, I just see, I just normally keep them as they are. Yeah, you, you postcards yeah, that you can get. Always... Um, color me shocked. You also get the film. Yeah, there it is, right there. 4K film with a behind the scenes uh, feature as well. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. Like I, I love that. 
Special uh, collector's editions now are getting a better treatment of their cases. And to mm. me, that's a bigger deal. Like these, they're like embossed. Um, yeah. I want to say satiny feeling boxes. They're very sturdy. Okay. Um, that's good. But they're, they're really nice. They're, they're re they look really good on the shelf, like the spine. Yeah. They're yeah, really yeah, yeah. nice. No, that's uh, a nice. It does. It looks like a, an actual book, mm. which is uh, which lends itself well to the tone of that film. And it's setting and stuff that's cool the reason i brought that up is because i brought these up now you mentioned in the last couple of episodes that you are trying to collect different very different um iterations of the original texas chainsaw massacre mm -hmm. yes, i brought, I brought mine i've started doing yeah i brought, I brought mine to the it. table now nice. i'm gonna i'm gonna start with the best one yeah i feel like you've i feel like i may have shown you this again you've definitely this, shown me this and I know full well that you're just what? looking for an excuse to show it off again. <laughs> Not the 4K, sir. Oh, no. Oh, I, get, I'm no, this is terribly better. sorry. But we'll, that's coming, isn't it? We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is my uh, one-of-a-kind uh, VHS. Um, oh, yeah, you have, yeah. you have shown me this just before. Yes. Have a look at that, folks. Um, yeah. I mean, that looks... It looks like a video on SD. That looks like somebody's... Dad's mates knocked it up. Got this at a pub the other week. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, this came with a, a job lot of horror VHSs off eBay. Um, it's been rewound. Nice. Pretty sure. Always I a mean, good touch. It, very basic sticker. It, mm -hmm. it feels like this is like a snuff videotape. I don't, I don't actually know if the film's on here. I feel like it's something else. Oh, you but watch yeah, it. It's um, some fan-made recreation. Like That's evidence that... you've got there, Tom. That's evidence. <laughs> this is... Yeah. <laughs> Fingerprints all over. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got to start with the VHS. Uh, not official, unfortunately, but seeing as we've seen how... It's still nice, though. It's still good. It's still cool, but seeing as we've seen how expensive movie posters cost these days, um, I dread to think how much a real videotape would cost. <laughs> Uh, we then go on to the uh, special edition um, D DVD. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was saying about boxes. Yeah. yeah. You see this? See this the... is like a cardboard box. Yeah, look how thin it is now. <laughs> it's, it should be that thick. Yeah. That thin. Because it's just, it may as well just be paper. Bit like, of dog earring on yeah, that. Yeah, they, they really did. They get didn't... scuffed quite easily, don't they? Yeah. yeah, it's that gate. It's that gatefold. Um, it comes up into a nice book, but yeah. And I mean, like, it's not. You know, look at the look at the box. It's just yeah, they're very flimsy. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because um, it if it was sturdy, it's quite a nice box. But mm -hmm. hey ho, it's got some. But it just that just happens. I mean, you know, especially if you've like moved a couple of times, you try you can try your best to keep those kind of cases neat and tidy and pristine and not possible they, they, it's just not it's just not possible no so unfortunately yeah still part of the collection a nice uh the blu-ray i think you've got this That's good. You? you got this so you, um, you got the halloween blu-ray i've got the halloween yeah halloween yeah. blu-ray i got recently um no i don't i don't do i have the original no i don't think i do have the original on blu-ray yet this has I did see I did see it the other day that I think it was that exact version mm. um and I didn't get it but there is a 40th anniversary edition in my local CEX and it's one of the swanky ones that they keep behind the counter oh um, and they keep for themselves just in case someone yeah. went by yeah um, yeah, it's it's good. It's got tons of special features. I mean, not as many special features as something else, but tons. And, do you know, I appreciate this. I appreciate a reversible... Oh, a nice little reversible cover. Yeah, and it's quite yes. a nice piece of artwork. So See, I wonder if... Because that, uh, that 40th anniversary is that cover. So yeah. I wonder if it's that version, but with uh, just like an extra slipcase on it or something. Let's show you what it... So it's like, it'll be like that. Yeah. But there is there's there's another plastic slipcase on it, I think. Oh no, this came just like this, so I don't know, mm. maybe. But, um, yeah. So it might I'd be interested. I'm gonna because I'm gonna grab it at some point if it's not snapped up by somebody else. Although I'm getting a lot of horror movies from my local CEX just recently, 
I've got a feeling that somebody has brought in their collection. <laughs> so Good I'm just lot. getting and I'm just yeah, slowly but surely just picking pieces out. Here it is. This is what he wants to show you all. <laughs> Speaking of, um, again, again, nice boxes. I mean, when you've got them like next to each other like that. They're, they're, they're beautiful. I mean, they are like, like two of my favorite movies right there. Yeah. Easily. Now, you think the witch book was big? Look at this. Yeah, that is a beast. It's about it's about a thumbnail size. All right, if we're going to be specific here, it's about a thumbnail width. Um, <laughs> I've read about half. Of Anything but the metric system, at all. <laughs> <laughs> the metric system. <laughs> um, yeah, it's insane for a click. It's got oh, a new book smell as well. New book smell. Oh, yeah. So. Just have a book. Like, that could go on your bookshelf. It'd be, it'd be I like the cover with the skulls. That's cool. Yeah. And with the little trophies. Yeah. Um, we got a nice piece of artwork on the um, of the disc mm. case itself. Three discs. Lots of special features. Nice. Still not got around to them yet. Um, Going to have a little bit of a Texas Change Core sesh in Texas August shot. when the game comes out because... Oh, yes, that's coming soon. Oh, yeah, it's not long now. And uh, tons of postcards again, as usual. But, yep, that I just wanted to put aside because uh, you were, you mentioned it the other week. And I was like, what have I actually got in the in the collection? I feel I feel like we do talk about extensively about Texas Chainsaw Massacre every episode. <laughs> because it's amazing. I know. I mean, I'm not. I don't have a problem with this. But I, I just feel like... Regular listeners will be like, "You should expect just, it by now." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When they, when they're, they're going to do a little bit about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's going to come up at some point. <laughs> I, hey, look, I I did warn everyone go skip up forward about half hour or so to if you want to listen to the, the film review. <laughs> that is true. Um, that is true. We watched part three the other night, me and the missus, and our odyssey of watching them all. That's a. That's a. It's a good four and a half out of five out of ten, I'd say. It's maybe, right. maybe five. It's a good five out of ten. It, it's, it was entertaining. I was, it's okay. It was, it's it, was, okay. it was entertaining. Yeah. It's one of those, like, it's entertaining as a film. Is it a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film? Uh, uh, uh. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you take I mean, Leatherface arguably... out of it. You yeah. Never... It's, you know. it's, mm. I, think it, I think that's, I think it, it struggles with too many, too many family members. Because oh, I think you. it's that kind of like, let's go bigger, let's go bigger with everyone. We'll introduce some new family members. We can pull some more family members out of the woodwork. And I think that is just there's too many. Mm. There's just too many going on. But it's entertaining, and I loved seeing Roger Rockmore blasting fools and uh, running around. It was it was a delight. I totally forgot that Ken Free played Keenan's dad oh, until yeah. I was watching that, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, of course he did. And of course, in Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, he's a big horror actor. He is. He is. Yeah. And when I think of him, I generally think of him from his horror roles. But yeah. I grew up watching Keenan and Cal yeah, and yeah. absolutely <laughs> adored it. And it wasn't until that other night when I was watching uh, watching Leatherface and I thought, shit, of course it's Keenan's dad. How did yeah. I not realize that? Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant I, stuff. I can't wait for you to get to the next generation. I'm still. I'm, it should have. I'm waiting for it to arrive. I've. I ordered a copy off uh, eBay, and I'm. It sh I don't know what's happened to it. I'm. It should have been here by now. I almost I'm want us to do a spontaneous. I almost want us to do a spontaneous episode on it. I just want to talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, no, we are going to get there. We're going to get there at some point. So, any pickups yourself then? I have one which I did tweet about the other day. Did that I is see distinctly this? horror related. Did I see this? Did he? Oh, I did see this. Beautiful. Yes. Yours cruelly, Elvira. Memoirs of the Mistress of the Dark, Sandra Peterson, uh, Peterson's autobiography. That's fantastic. Um, I saw I, uh, I saw an Instagram post the other day, um, and I don't even know what account it was now. I don't think it was... Cassandra or Rain Wilson was in it as well, or it was just another random horror account that I follow. But they were like, but it was it was a little clip of Cassandra and Rain Wilson yeah. um, 
from Dwight from the office in case you don't yeah. know who that is. Um, the, they've both got books out at the same time and they were at some event and they were basically just like filming this little thing, plugging each other's books. And I was like, holy shit, Elvira's got a book. Right, I'm ordering that. So I did. And it's arrived and it looks it looks wonderful and very interesting. All I've done so far is just sort of flip through the, the photographs in the centre. You know, um, we've see used if any good ones. We've used the description for a film once before that it, that was a good fun romp. I feel like a, that book would be a good fun romp. I feel like it will. I think it does actually. Oh, so the uh, the little write ups that you get on yeah. the back, the little sort of um, oh the the blurbs, right? The blurbs, yeah, the the pithy little um, quotations are. For, uh, the, this is just a list of the people who gave quotations for it. Mm. We have RuPaul. Oh. Kat Von D, oh. Paul Rubens, yep. Jack White, Peaches Christ, I'm not entirely sure who that is, but with a name like that, I'm thinking possibly musician, punk rocker or porn star. Yep. Um, Dita Von Tees, Rob Zombie, and uh, Pamela DeBar. This is also a name I'm not entirely familiar with. There's mostly but, a theme there with those people. But yeah, a good bunch of people. Um so yeah, I mean, just for example, RuPaul said, friggin' hilarious, juicy stories, and outrageous revelations. Um, I feel like I feel like it's going to be a fun romp. I do feel like it's going to be a good read, that one. Um, so that's it. That's the only real horror-related pickup I've got recently. I think I showed off all the latest movie pickups last time. Believe you did. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it for me. Short one this week. I have one more thing to talk about before we get into the film. I know, folks, I know, but this is important. Is it? And it's horror related. Is it the Exorcist poster? It might be the. It, it, yeah. It's not just the poster. It's. It's how bad it is. <laughs> it's it's that I, and, and I also wanted to talk about like I didn't realize like, we, we've got like, we we had the first half of this year where there were like we had a, a good influx of horror films. Whether or not they were good or bad, it was a good influx in general. There was a lot of horror films, and it feels like the second half of that is coming with the autumn. Yeah, noticed. And after after we talked earlier um, about the, the David Gordon Green's new Exorcist film, um, I went down a sort of little mini rabbit hole just looking. Okay, what else is coming out? Because I believe there's quite a few things coming out in um, the autumn, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty packed, but. As I look here, um, Saw 10, which yep. I believe the trailer comes out soon. And have you seen the premise for it? Um, something about going to... It's, it lies between the original Saw and Saw 3, is that right? And it's something about yeah. Jigsaw going to Mexico for cancer treatment. <laughs> yeah, like, I never saw Jigsaw, the film titled jigsaw no. mm -hmm. or spiral um but i'm fairly certain the franchise didn't it didn't do so well at that point i mean it was dwindling towards the end could say it spiraled <laughs> rim shot there we go sorry couldn't can, resist oh we can we can cap the pod now we'd end it now <laughs> we've peaked good night um, folks yeah we're out of here <laughs> um i'm just oh, I, I like Saw 1, 2, and maybe 3, like, especially Saw 1, very compelling story. Mm -hmm. And then they, they went down the torture porn route, you know, they went, what yeah. obscure, crazy traps can we do? Then we'll fit the story in with a twist. There was always a twist. And I feel like it would be hard to do Saw 10 as a follow-up to Saw 9 with a compelling story after all that people were just people were kind of wanting the traps you know they want to see they know so yeah. they want the, the traps and the gore porn but if you're going to set this between it's either between saw one and two or saw two and three i think at, i saw something that said it was between the first two but I, you might be right don't quote me on that I, I, I can't even remember where i saw it now it was just in passing somewhere but if you're titling it saw 10 uh, uh, no, I, it, no, don't do that. Because Saw 10 implies... It's actually titled Saw X, X meaning 10. Yeah. Saw 10 mm -hmm. implies it's after the last one. Yeah. Call it Saw and then a subtitle. 
not a number. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like you say, it's gone. It's gone far enough. That franchise is far enough. For, definitely far enough along. Oh, arguably gotcha. beyond it, its logical stopping point, where it is just about the traps and people know what's coming and you know. Yeah, and and definitely now they they are. We probably can't get away with that again. We need to try and do something mm, to freshen it up. Mm, so the logical re- way to go is prequel, isn't it? Um, prequel they've two, done something, two films, yeah. But they've done something slightly different in that it's yeah, it's a it's a one point five. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's like DLC, isn't it? It's like oh, we're getting we're getting um, something between the first two movies. Like yeah, I mean. We already know what's uh, happened before and after, but we're just... It's like a Rogue One. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah, Rogue it's One. sort of the Sony-verse. It's, a, yeah. it's a, a related story in the... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what... I think... I, I can't decide what's worse. A prequel would be like, oh, fuck's sake, really? We're doing, this is what we're doing now. Yeah. Um, But... What they've gone for, like I say, is like a little bit of story that they should have told years ago. And they were like, oh, shit, yeah, we didn't do that. Right, okay, part 10 is going to be actually part 1.5. And we've shoe on it. It can't be good. It can't, no. it just it can't be good if that's what they, they've done. And they've gone, oh, shit, yeah, we, we could have told this. We should have told this story earlier. Here it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a. The first couple were all right, but I lost interest in the Saw franchise mm. quite quickly. So I'm not hyped for this in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, it's that thing of it, Even it's less so. star. I think we've talked about it before. Star Wars is probably the biggest example where they feel like they have to explain every single Everything. thing in the yeah. universe. Yeah. How did Jigsaw um, get that pig mask? Yeah. Where does he buy his bath towels? Where, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, mm. Yeah, um, it's it's getting that way. We've also got uh, the Nun too, but I I don't. I, again, I've said this before. I was never mm. interested in the Conjuring franchise or the Nun. It's just nope. a big big demon that has a big mouth. That goes, yeah, no, um, not keen, not bothered. Saw the trailer for it, meh. We have Thanksgiving, Eli Roth's Thanksgiving in November. I mean, that'll be a gore fest. It it needs to be dumb as fuck. It needs to be so <laughs> stupid. It, and but th- what's good about it is because it already has pretext in the fact it was it was a fake trailer for Grindhouse, like Machete was. Machete was oh, dumb, right, okay, dumb yeah, fun, yeah, yeah. you know. Like it 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 wasn't real. It was really dumb. The trailer was so dumb. That's it fine to, then. He needs to carry on with that. He doesn't. You don't. I don't want characters trying to or actors trying to act straight. I want it to be so dumb, cheesy, yeah. um, and Eli Roth. Uh, we've also got the Strangers remake, which I'm not happy about, because um, the Strangers is a great film. Yeah. And then finally, yeah, The Exorcist. That poster, man. That it's, poster. It's just stupid. It's terrible. Um, <sighs> I, uh... So what? What is it? What, just what? Tell me what's going on in it, like. Well, I assume we're looking at, instead of one young girl possessed, we're looking at maybe twins or two young girls or... I couldn't... I mean, is it trying to be clever? Is it trying to be too... It's trying to be arty, it's trying to be clever. I thought it was the same girl, but she's... It's like the comedy tragedy. She's smiling in one, she's angry in another. Um, and why is it rotate? Like we're having to. Why is it rotating? But that we're looking. We're, this is you know for for we're, we're looking at if you've seen it or not seen it that everything's all skew if so you've got to look at it. And it and but is that, that is that supposed to be some sort of clever thing that like oh we're 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 manipulating you you've got to look at it like this. Because I don't know because you look at it stupid. You, you look at it dead on. I. I, my I, my eyes can't my my brain can't see. No, when I when I like an illusion or anything. When I first saw it, and I think it was this, I think it was today, I think it was this morning when I first saw it on Twitter. Yeah. It was obviously a small image. It was a thumbnail, so I really couldn't make anything out. So I clicked on it to enlarge it, and yeah, it was then I was I was looking at my phone, so I was trying to rotate it, and 
Yeah, it's just annoying. I hate it. I hate everything about it. And she doesn't look as good. It, no. It's, you know, Reagan McNeil in The Exorcist is what is a Mount Rushmore horror villain. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, not the Zuzu, Reagan. <laughs> yeah. Instantly <laughs> recognizable. Um, <laughs> you just see the leak I sent you. It's yeah. much, much better, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh dear. we just just uh, i put it i'll put it in the uh youtube video right now um of the audio listeners it's just a an image of the original exorcist uh that was the poster wasn't it of the uh, it the, was the poster but the the yeah the the priest looking up at the, the light priest, in the window yeah. but it's rotated 90 degrees <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't get it i don't get it but i um i think we will be getting a trailer Oh, this trailers, um, the trailer's in cinemas at the minute. It's it's, it's running in, yeah. before Oppenheimer, certainly. Um, I imagine other films as well. I'm going to see Barbie on Sunday. I don't think it'll be running before the Barbie movie somehow. But if it is, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I as much as I'm not excited for the film because it's a, it's a pointless remake. It's one of the most. It's one of the most pointless remakes in horror. Um, especially by done by David Gordon Green. After look at look what happened to the Halloween trilogy, many ups and downs. I'm not excited about the film. I'm excited about the trailer because I want. To, I need to know. Mm. I need to know. Yeah, I definitely want to see the trailer. Like, we'll do. We'll do. A, it. We'll do a trailer reaction video. I think we've, we haven't we done one in do. a while. Um, and we, yeah. we'll we'll probably have the sort. We'll have, we've got a few coming up probably. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is a thing. Go check it out, folks. It's called The Exorcist Believer because they have to have a subtitle now, remember? Um, studios don't like numbers. No. Um, yeah, that was my last my last point about, about the autumn of horror that we've got coming up. Um, yeah, that's a fair point. I thought it was just going to be the... Uh... Just yeah. gonna be the Exorcist one, but I'm glad I'm glad you brought it up because I did want to talk about how terrible yeah. it is. <laughs> it's horrendous. It's horrendous. Um, right. Let's talk about something that's not so horrendous. Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> I it's can't. It's the film. You'd love the to film tell us. With, with the sentient trucks. What? Yes. But you mustn't truck. <laughs> Their machines yeah. sound good in your ear. <laughs> but when you hear them, you mustn't fear. <laughs> well, you must fear them, though, Tom. You must fear them. Because that's the whole premise of. Man. Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive. 1986. 1986, yes. Man, when I messaged um, you earlier and I said, mm -hmm. word for word, what, what did I say? I said... Uh, 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 which message? It? About the film. There it is. I said a fun as hell movie, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Okay. I, I had only watched half of the film at that point. All <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> I finished the half, I finished it before we started this. Um, first impressions. First half's better than the second half. Yeah. Way better. But as a film, uh, yeah, it's fun. It is fun. It is fun. It is fun. My. My first impression, well, it it wasn't, because was this your first time seeing it? Yeah, yeah. It was your first time seeing it. I don't think it'll be as entertaining the second time round. No. So no. it was the second time I watched it, and I was, I struggled. I was struggling with it. That's fair. Um, it's, it is great. For a first watch, we're kind of doing this, I'll spout it, but yeah, if you've not seen it before, go and see Maximum Overdrive. It's, yeah. it's really good fun. It's ridiculous. The premise is stupid. Everything about it is stupid. But it's great fun. You don't have to think about it. Just put it on and let it let it do its thing. 
but you'll you'll never need to watch it again. It, it's it doesn't have anything to bring you back for a second time. I don't think. No, um, it, it really doesn't. But that that first time, every it's one of those everybody should see it once. I think everybody should see it once because it, it just the premise is a comet passing by Earth. Yeah, that we're told at the beginning. There's a little uh, text. Uh, paragraph on the screen that we we told that the Earth's Earth's going to be in the path the tail of this comet for is it eight days or six days yeah. or something like that. Uh, it has a code um, as well, like like the normally get planets yeah. and uh, things yeah, like that. HX two yeah. one four or whatever it is. Um, so we're told that we're going to be in the in the the path of this comet for like eight days, and during that time, all machinery on Earth comes alive and we'll get back we'll get back to that <laughs> point <laughs> <laughs> and uh and yeah and then it we it, we we see how a group of people sort of survive that that encounter that and that's the premise of the movie and th that's it pretty yeah. much there's nothing more to it than that 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 is the premise which i i think great that we got it out the way now because i don't feel like there's not enough meat there's not there's not as much meat in this film <laughs> there's very little meat in this film there's um, very little meat in this film to it's really ground up gym mats yeah there's very little meat in this film to really go point by point yeah but i have a lot of points on the film um firstly when, when, um, when we do the schedule for the Dreadcast, um, I'll try and get the artwork done in advance, like the thumbnails, the, all that stuff, just so I'm ahead. So when I got the thumbnails done for this film, I hadn't seen it at that point. And obviously, the the, the marketing material is that Green Goblin truck. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so yeah. I was like, okay, that's that's clearly going to be the... That's your antagonist in, in some sense of the, the word, you know? Mm -hmm. Even if it is a machine to life, that's your evil. That's your that's your villain. So I, I tried to make that centre point I said that's the focal point of the thumbnail and the artwork and of this episode and i really thought this film kind of went into it a bit blind but i thought this film was about uh, emilio estevez our, our, our hero in mm -hmm. some sense of the word um basically being chased down by this possessed truck because that is the thing you always see that truck yeah i was i was pleasantly I was happy to be wrong from I mean, the beginning of the film. I was happy to be wrong that it was a different. It was different to what I thought, but at the same time, it just didn't deliver at the end. No, it, it doesn't. I, it, I mean, it doesn't for a lot of reasons. It's it, it's it's a thin premise mm. that runs out of steam quite quickly. Yeah. Well, it but it, it it's it paint they paint themselves into a corner, I think, because a bulk, the bulk of the movie is um a a, hot, a siege situation with mm. a bunch of people in a gas station like diner mm. um being held at bay by a bunch of marauding trucks. And we get snippets of other machines going haywire. There's yeah. a, a bread knife attacks somebody and a vending machine takes somebody out. And there's a, the, uh, I mean, the opening scene is Stephen King being called an asshole by an ATM machine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it very quickly gets onto the trucks and stays with the trucks. And then, and that's it. Yeah, that's, that's it, it. it. If there'd have been a little bit more of other machines and other situations then yeah they, if they could they could have, they would have done more with that premise of machines going haywire then there might have been a little bit more in it but because they did they, they picked this one thing trucks and they ran with it now it is an, it should, probably should say that it is an adaptation of a stephen king story as well um called trucks funnily enough is it now i didn't know that it is. I've not read it myself. I believe it appears in the Night Shift. I think it was originally published in a magazine, um, maybe serialized in a magazine, but it appears in the Night Shift uh, compilation. 
Okay. I've not read it myself. I couldn't tell you how it compares to the movie. Yeah. Um, but it is it is a screen adaptation of that directed by the author as well. So you've got to assume that mm. it's pretty close to the source material. Um, right. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because as I said, I've not read it. But based on those factors, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it probably is quite close. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I could imagine... I've not read much King. I've read a couple of his books. I can imagine the, it being quite as ridiculous as the premise is. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think it's meant to be that serious. No, but I can imagine that way. I can imagine the book being a, a lot more, having a bit more tension and it essentially being, you know, Assault on Precinct, Precinct 13 with yeah. possessed machinery. But the but film is not that. The, the film is something... No, it's not. It's not. It, 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 in its wildest dreams, it's not that. Um, the, the machines, right? Let, let's talk about... Like, I mean, forget, forget the, the, the humans, right? That, that will come back, put them aside for now. The the premise, the, the like, there's issues with it. But I feel like you, I, I, my brain and anyone else, you could really overthink this. Like, mm -hmm. it's just a fun film, right? You don't need to overthink it, but I can't help but overthink it. Yeah, yeah. Firstly, I think this would be, it. like you said, it does run out of steam. This would be a great creep show. Episode. That that's kind of what it feels like is yeah. a, a, a stretched creep show episode uh, or yeah. you know, vignette like that's been stretched out. Yeah, that's that is what it feels like. And obviously, I mean Stephen King, Stephen King had a hand in that as well. Um, yeah, that's is very much the the tone of it. I mean, I think we should probably get out of the way fairly early on as well. Like the one fact that everybody knows about this film that Stephen King went on record as saying. Like he was doing a lot of cocaine. Oh yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, at the time <laughs> that this was made, and no he shit, has <laughs> next to no memory of making it. Yeah, and no shit. When asked why he's never directed a film since, his response is generally to say, "Have you seen Maximum Overdrive?" <laughs> so you know, Explains nobody, everything. nobody was expecting great things going into it, and no. um, you know, it's. It's on record. It's out there that it's um, the the the, yeah, the product of a cork addled mind. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it does. It it feels it feels like a sh it would have been better as a short movie or even a sketch. You know what I mean? It's yeah. uh, the some of it is very very slapstick. The the guy taken out by the vending machine shooting cans at him. Very goofy. Very goofy. Very goofy. Ooh. Yeah. Well, making strange groaning sounds and he gets hit in the crotch and he crumples. It's, yeah, it's it's very silly. The, the machines, right? So, mm -hmm. technology. It, they're very selective, in a way, of the machine. Like, yeah, we get uh, the, the the bridge. I'm self-aware. Mm -hmm. Go, the, the bridge, uh, what, what would you call it? Well, what kind of type of bridge is that? Uh, the, uh, I don't it's not, know. It's not a suspension uh, bridge. It's a a, a bridge that a, can, a bridge that raises. Uh, a, there's got to be a name. There is a name for it. And it's a bridge think. where the road splits and goes up and down. How a, are we so bad lift, at this? A lifting bridge. One of, it's one of those. It's so one, one of those. those. One of those folks with your hands go flappy back what? and forth. It's a flappy bridge. A, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Um. So the the, the mechanism of that becomes self aware because. Of, machines becoming alive and all the cars on it i couldn't tell if they were uh the, the cars on it were self-aware and sort of throwing themselves onto other cars or tumbling down because people just seem to stay in their car and not try and escape mm -hmm. so you got that you got the vending machine which you mentioned like ice cream truck lawnmower um but then if you really think into it machines that or computers or machines that control, I don't know, uh, deciding whether a nuclear bomb goes off or not. Well, yeah. Or a nuclear yeah, yeah, yeah. power station. They could just decide off. It could have been. Fire. Because yeah, it, they... Yeah, it could have been a lot to, shorter. Uh, but it's just <laughs> focused on trucks. Like, what about hundreds of thousands of people in the sky? Are planes not mm -hmm. just dive bombing mm -hmm. 
There, there's like I mean there is there is a bit with the plane, isn't there, I think, towards the end. Uh there's one there's two bits. There's one where it's taken off on its own. And then I think it's the same plane which you see. It's like uh it's like mm. it's dive bomb uh, vertically straight into like a school bus. Yeah. But that's it. But like how many planes are in the sky at once? All these little yeah. things I know I say I'm overthinking it, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needed a bit more substance to that. If you're gonna if you're gonna commit to okay, anything I hate to go back to it. The Simpsons did it. Did it better, actually, later on, where it was a Treehouse of Horror episode where everything with yeah. a microchip after Y2K became self aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the new razor that he bought at March. It's like the, <laughs> the Remington uh, lady yeah. shape, which <laughs> but, zips off into the distance. But that's what I mean. It's, it's an obscure little machine, but it's a machine. It's a computer. It's got a chip in it. Yeah, it's I think, like I say, I think, I think the setting was wrong for, it, for yeah. the premise. Uh, I mean, you know ignoring the fact that it's based on based on the the the, the story that king wrote we, we're just going to deal with the story as it yes is. And yeah, yeah. yeah the film yeah a, a bunch of trucks driving around i mean the, the, at any time most of those semi trucks could have just plowed through that building and taken them out like yeah they don't dis- they know. decide not to decide to toy like uh, like toy with their their prey you know yeah and have them um, working for them like they're en- enslaved yeah. they're, they're actually interested in enslaving people yeah it's very strange and then there's the bur- the the burger restaurant drive through voice box that basically shouts a warning that there's humans, humans. there yeah <laughs> and like I, the it's this radioactivity from the comet right the comet's trail mm-hmm. that has somehow sprinkled to earth and made these machines come alive so, but why is it always instantly they're evil? They just want to kill. They're evil. <laughs> is it well because it's? To... I don't know. I guess it's they've. So they, it suggests that there has been there is a dormant subconscious yeah. in yeah, there yeah. that that where they feel like they've been persecuted and enslaved, and the second that they've managed to wake up, then they, exactly. they're getting their revenge. Yeah. I don't know. And it's very selective how they're doing it as well because there's a lot more machines in that building, like the coffee machine, presumably, and things that, that nothing else happens with any of them. It, it I mean, the petrol pump. With, with, yeah, the petrol, the petrol pump. Okay, look into petrol a petrol in that, pump. In that guy's eye. And then later on, they need the humans to like fill them up with petrol. Yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it... it's very selective. Yeah. Um, it... Yeah, I, I haven't even watched. Uh, again, like I said, I could I could go so deep into what about this machine? What about this machine? Yeah, yeah. It would yeah. be open. I, just, I, I think that like we said it, it could have it, it could have been a, a different setting. Uh, that it, chopping mall essentially. Yeah. If it had been another chopping Love mall Love with, it. you know, all the household as well, not just murderous security robots, but all the household appliances for sale yeah. and everything else you could have got a, a bunch of like wacky and fun deaths out of that the escalators chewing people off up and um you know vacuum cleaners chasing people around or whatever but yeah the fact that it's just that most of the movie is a bunch of people sat around while a bunch of trucks circle them and, and nobody's nobody's that bothered like none of the human characters Man. have any real sort of urgency about them or like i have a, they, I have a lot to talk care. yeah i have a lot to talk about about a lot of this a lot of the the casting the character the, char- the the choices of characters um in our group the the loves the, the the love story that we've got that just suddenly uh, goes from naught to 100 yeah a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of this doesn't just work. It just a lot of it doesn't work in this no. film. It really doesn't. It the setup I actually really like. I like the setup of the film. It's when it starts to try and pay it all off. It it, it kind of lost me a bit. And I was kind of I was not getting bored. I was losing attention. Yeah. I was losing my attention span because I felt like, all right, can we we do something new. That's it. There's a lot yeah. of the same thing happens for yeah. I I felt exactly the same thing. I was I was trailing off because it it was just it was just the same thing on a loop for a bit. Running from somebody running from a truck, somebody running from a lawnmower. Yeah, we'll we'll switch to somebody else and all this. Yeah, and then oh something's just blown up. And I found myself rewinding it at a couple of points because 
something had happened and I just found that I was not paying any attention to it whatsoever. And I was like, hang on a minute. What what was that? So the right early on, even the salesman getting run over, I had to rewatch that scene like three or four times because I kept just glazing over. And I was like, hang on, why is the salesman dead now? When did he get killed? So it's, it's for the first the first de proper death of the movie, or we later, later find out he's not dead. But for what we perceive to be the first kill of the movie, you, you're looking at me like you're trying to think what it is now, aren't you? Is he the the guy in the car with the the yeah the, the he's main... got the the lady that yeah oh the people die before him up. did they we we see a, a kid get crushed before him in the in the baseball pitch oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah fair one okay yeah 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 I suppose <laughs> that is is the first one to die out of that group of survivors yes. if you will though you know. Where yes. it's like when the in the, it's the point of the movie where they realize that something's going on. Yeah. Um and yeah, they just they just they don't they react to it in a really strange way. They they pick him up and they bring him inside and it's like, Oh, he's dripping on the floor, like shift him out of there and then she gets changed because she's got dead salesman smell on her. <laughs> it's just, just nobody reacts to it in a normal way. It's all very weird. And then they just go back to kind of sitting around going, huh, bunch of trucks out there. There's a lot of just sitting around thinking about what's going on. Mm. But There's it is thinking about it. There's no not doing. discussion about it. There's no urgent. As, as, like I say, as ridiculous as the premise is, mm. there's no sense of urgency or... Like no, that's key. Danger, no sense of urgency or any real sort of man. This is a weird situation we found ourselves in. They're just like it, it's like. I mean, replace the trucks for like a heavy rainstorm. <laughs> it's like the same thing. They just kind of sat going, "Oh well, we'll wait for this rain to stop before we can, yeah. before we can go home. <laughs> we wait for these trucks to stop." <laughs> Yeah, it's there's no, there's no like, no sense of urgency, no sense of like, and it's called peril, maximum <laughs> overdrive. Like, there's, and it's, there's there is no maximum overdrive in the film. Not way. really. Not Min really. minimal. Minimal overdrive. Minimal overdrive. Some overdrive. Some. <laughs> the soundtrack. The soundtrack does its does the job. Of yeah. The, trying to amp up the action. The soundtrack. Now the thing, the thing with the soundtrack is what. Where did I? Where did I write this note? Uh, okay, one of the, the the thing with the soundtrack is what I got big vibes of this film. Um, big vibes of Return of the Living Dead with this film. Mm -hmm. Mid eighties. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a rock fun ro cheesy rock tune it's a bit goofy in places but the premise is trying to be really serious and you kind of get that with Return of the Living Dead you know send more paramedics yeah. like it felt like that's where I felt like when I messaged you it was like okay this is fun this movie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't need to sit and be take it really serious you, don't, you can't take this film seriously and you all. can't and you no. shouldn't and it is it is silly that's exactly what it is you know, we've, we've returned to Living Dead. Like, do you want a party? It's party time. <laughs> and it's not. It's a zombie apocalypse. And we've got ACDC just rocking out over the soundtrack of yeah. trucks, trucks and all machines in the world killing people. But then also rocking out over the quiet scenes where people are sat around talking as well. There's, yeah. There's a really... Um, it, it's where... Is it Billy? Uh, Emilio Estevez's character? Yeah, is he, yeah. Is it Bill? Um, he's talking about how aliens aliens are responsible and they're they're looking for a new place to live and they've sent in their intergalactic cleaner to get rid of the humans and it's yeah. it's ridiculous again and it, it's kind of silly but while he's having this what would be in a you know a more serious film this like sort of heartfelt kind of damn we're doomed monologue. You've got this like really sick bluesy guitar riff yeah. over the top of it all, and it's just so out of place. 
And the music's going. Bow, 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 yeah. bow, 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 bow. And he's like, going, damn. <laughs> that kid gets absolutely. I think it's a steamroller. I think he gets killed. Yeah, it's a steamroller. I remember this, now. This, yeah, yeah. You know, you kill a kid in the film, that's balls, okay? It doesn't normally happen. Kid gets killed by a steamroller. <laughs> Not like a. No. Actually, though, there is there is a little bit of sort of more of an attempt at horror musicals things. There's a really psycho esque kind of ring. No, it's about. Re- it occurs a lot, and it's generally when somebody's getting terrorized by a machine. It, so it's. I think it, appear, it definitely appears more in that sort of first act where they're mm-hmm. establishing that everything's going haywire. So when the lady gets uh, the the waitress gets attacked by the electric knife. Um, there's another scene where somebody's getting chased by some vehicle or other. I can't yeah. quite remember what it is. Um, the other bit with the, the cigarette machines all going haywire and stuff. So it's basically, it's when we we get those sort of early establishing shots. And it's it's essentially like the violin stings from Psycho. Yep. But it's more machine sounding, like a engine revving almost kind of yeah um but there's also like every other sci-fi bleepy bloopy yeah machines science things are happening it's like free lab sound, library sound effect like in there as well or the public domain <laughs> sound effects yeah yeah yeah, yeah it, go on sorry no, I was just going to say you expect it to be like, like almost like a like an old Doctor Who episode or something like that, or you know, like a, a TV mm. movie where yeah, budgets maybe a little bit low and they've just gone for public domain, free sound effects everywhere that? that they can, and put put but put them all in, like they're all in there. Let's use it. Hey, we've got ten. Let's get ten. They're all in. They're all going in there and merge them into one. Just whatever, <laughs> whatever comes out. The more sound, the more science. That's that's what, we what need, we're doing. What we need to do is cr- is create an immense sense sound sense of dread. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very much like that. It's very um, much like that. I mentioned like I got kind of returned a little bit of return to Living Dead vibes, and there was a kind of couple of others that I got, but obviously this film is before these two films. So, have you ever seen Feast? Feast. Feast, F E A S. Yeah. <clears throat> Rings a bell. Now, uh, uh, also, uh, just before I describe it as well, it also reminds me of Tremors. So, this, I don't know how you would describe it. I, I think you you know, knocked on the head with Siege, right? But got, I mean, Maxim, uh, it, it's Tremors with trucks. Yeah, we've got a group of survivors yeah. holed up somewhere, and they're basically in so some uh, being surrounded by whatever the evil monster whatever it is and feast to me does it it's not the best film but it's great great fun it's more fun than this film it is a group of call them survivors hold up in a dingy bar in the middle of nowhere in america with a monster outside trying to get it i haven't seen it but it looks and great you will love it and you don't see the monster <laughs> until maybe halfway through it is gory it is fun. It is stupid, but the the thing I I will really compare Feast with. I mean, again, this came before Feast. Feast with Maximum Overdrive is that with Feast, you're given so much more character development than this mm-hmm. film. I feel like that's a massive problem with this film. The character development. There are so many characters in this film. I don't know the names of. I didn't care about. They mm-hmm. just they're just there. Um, Feast, I think you're looking at maybe hmm, 10 maximum characters, but they're all, they all have individual characteristics. Yeah. You know, the bar, the old bar owner, dark like this, he got the, he's got the gun behind the bar. You've got the sleazy uh, business guy that's just come in from town who's cheating on his wife. Uh, you've got um, the, the hero, you know, the big jock guy. It, this film doesn't have that. It doesn't, but I think there's a very good reason for that. And I think that reason is there's a lot of filler because mm. they needed a bit of a body count for when the gun truck turns up. 
Yeah, that that gets rid of the the, the filler, doesn't it? That really I think does. There's, there's about half a dozen people die in that scene, and that's the only reason for their existence in the movie and to be in that place is because they've got a bunch of quite obvious blood packs strapped to them, and they're all going to get gunned down in one yeah. fell swoop. There's this. I mean, two... one, I think I'm sure one guy's wearing like a bright orange, bright green T-shirt, and I'm sure he's only wearing that to to make that blood like spatter you know seem brighter <laughs> he might be the one that gets robocopped that was my reference that was my, oh, okay. that was my segue he, he like gets robocopped where it's just relentless blood packs going on yes 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 um but we there's only out of all that group that get gunned down there's only two characters that are notable there's the the um the waitress who uh, uh, originally got cut by the electric knife and mm -hmm. the manager um yeah dirtbag manager but the rest i i couldn't couldn't give you a name i couldn't tell you anything about them truck no. drivers they're just truck drivers that stop truck there. drivers um there's lisa simpson um, uh, well, oh we need to talk about her we need to talk about <laughs> her. yardley smith or yearly yardley smith yeah uh um, but yeah and uh, emilio estevez and lisa simpson walk into a diner and um a bunch yep. of bunch of stuff happens yeah uh, yeah I, I agree there's no there's no plot, like no real effort to to make any of these characters stand out. I, I mean, you... even even the main characters, even Emilio, you know, Emilio Estevez's character is he just really a guy. Stand there's, out, yeah. There's nothing about him. He's 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 got jeans and a white t-shirt on, and he's he's just a guy. He's like, there's nothing yeah. about him whatsoever. He's got no no past that's relevant to any weird stuff going on you know what i mean there's no hook no it's personality just, just, just a dude that's there just a dude everybody's just just some dude that's there i think of other let's call them there probably is a title we're just rubbish at this we're thinking of things let's call them siege films siege horror films yeah. i feel like i feel like the, the thing is probably could probably fall under this you know they're held up in the antarctic base mm -hmm. they're not so much surrounded i guess because they're your tremors, they're they're kind of surrounded by the the, the monsters. Well, there's no the way planet. out, is there? There's no. no way out, and there's a threat. Cause there's no way out because they're in the middle of the Arctic. Mm. So I guess I guess it falls under the. Usually, it, it's in a siege film. It's they can't get out because of the threat. But yeah. I suppose in in that mm. instance, they can't get out because there's nowhere to go, and there's yeah. a threat. Yeah, I'd, I'd 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 say it works as a as well. That's a siege film. That's why that's why Feast instantly. I mean, Feast is mid two thousands, but that instantly mm -hmm. popped into my head because it's yeah, they're stuck in a bar. There is something that will absolutely rip them to shreds outside the bar. What do we do? It, it's a lot more captivating than this was. Mm. Um, yeah, so Lisa Simpson shows up, uh, and it's so weird. You get these new <laughs> actors that don't do, um, shall we say, anything above a 12 rating or a PG rating. Weird hearing Lisa Simpson say shit. Little things like yeah. that. Because like, <laughs> Lisa I mean, Simpson's such a calm character. It's kind of weird seeing a full stop, really. Because I, yeah. I know she's done a, a few She's done a few roles. She's been in a few things. But she's, she's a voice actor primarily, I think oh, it's yeah. fair to say. Mm -hmm. So it's strange seeing a full stop anyway, and I always find it a bit weird when you see like a predominant voice artist in the flesh and you hear that yeah. that voice coming out of because I, I think it's quite close to her her natural voice, isn't it? I don't think she's oh, yeah. necessarily put she's not putting on Lisa's voice no. quite so much as, you know, maybe other characters are played. Um it is quite close to her natural voice. So yeah, it is just like seeing Lisa Simpson running around, newlywed Lisa Simpson. Um, I mean, they being... probably have a fair bit of character development, I guess. That's their their story, the newlyweds that I mean, end, up at, end up at the station, the gas station. There is something interesting there. They've they've got a hook. They've got something that's yeah. memorable. They have uh, you know something about their interaction because she's a bit of a nag to be quite honest yeah. <laughs> she's but the, like, the you're thing not going with, there you're not doing this <laughs> the thing with them is that i they felt like a trope couple in the sense mm. of okay our main story is happening over here right this this side uh with our main group and what's the evil that's happening 
we cut to this side story of this couple in the car. There's a truck following them. Mm. And we don't know what's going to happen because the trucks haven't done anything here yet, but the truck is going to do something here. They don't know what's going on. The truck kills them and then we're done with. So, okay, so we know what the truck's going to do. Gonna do. We know what the evil's going to do. We go back to our main group. So we don't we don't sacrifice any of our main group yet. We sacrifice these people just off screen, you know. Yeah. I thought they were going to be sacrificial lambs, but no, they become yeah. part of your. They become part of the heroes. Part of the heroes. Yeah. Um, I mean, same with that little kid as well. He's stalked across town by a bunch yeah. of stuff before he, he eventually winds up there. Um, I mean, he's got. I think he's going to meet with his dad, isn't he? His dad works there, and I think his he's... dad is the. Uh, petrol station attendee who yeah. gets the petrol mm-hmm. blast in his face <laughs> thinks he's survived and then suddenly gets mowed down by uh, one of the <laughs> yeah. lorries. Uh, he has a pretty rough time, yeah. Um, I did like, I do like the shot though. Again, it feels like they're setting more up when he is on his push bike going through the neighborhood, seeing all the deaths, like the lawnmower that's killed someone. Mm. And then you don't really get more of that. No, no. It's yeah. It's everything's a bit too spaced out, and they they had they, they knew what they were going to do, and it was like mm-hmm. let's go, let's all get to the truck stop as quick as we can. Um, but yeah, they could have had. I mean, they could have had everybody rendezvous there eventually, but of I think too many people started there as well. Yeah, so yeah. if we'd have had a few more people, sort of escaping from their hut because we could have had a variety of settings there we could have had the you know the newlywed couple they're driving down the road and they get run off the road by a truck you've got the kid that you know dodging various things in people's gardens lawnmowers etc you could have had somebody else working in maybe a department store where there's a bunch of other appliances You, you could have had a various people in different situations dealing with machines and then all coming together at the truck stop but we yeah. pretty much had a big group at the truck stop with a couple of more that filter in and then they're all there and that's it. It almost happened too quickly. You could mm. have had all these side stories like you said, yeah, and then culminating eventually to the gas station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely. Like, yeah, yeah, now, now I'm really thinking about it. Like you said, that's that's a really good point. Him him trying to... The kid, the kid story is struggling to get through the suburbs. The... Yeah. The, uh, the newlywed couple constantly being um stalked by this one truck which i think mm. the film was about mm. they 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 lead this truck to the gas station um who else who else could i mean i get the salesman and you had the salesman but you also had the young woman who suddenly we'll get to her in a minute what was her relation to the salesman did she work i think him? she was a hitchhiker that he picked she was up, a hitchhiker I so yeah. i mean let's say what could dare their story they could have i don't know stopped at a motel one night or they've mm-hmm. woken up from motel uh i mean he's a salesman he could have I mean, he's a bible salesman wasn't it yeah but he could have been selling you know electric whisks he could have been yeah. selling yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, that's yeah. gone gone rogue electric bibles <laughs> coin operated bibles <laughs> Um, you know, it, it could have been something like that. You know, you could have had a bunch of, a bunch of toasters in the back of the car that went mad, or something. I don't know. Said hitchhiker, um, man, this love story is awful. <laughs> like she instantly, they instantly fall in love. Huh. Instantly. Um, I know times are tough. It's a perilous situation. It's the end of the world, but. You've, you've still got to pick and choose a bit. You know? Well, she gave she gave the handsy salesman the knockback, so yeah. Um, <laughs> so then she had to, yeah. So she jumped into the arms of the first, the the next man that she saw, basically. That's it. Her name's Brett, and she instantly thinks Bill's cute. Instantly, mm-hmm. it like it's it's happened so fast, but also. I don't buy the love story at all. I don't. I didn't buy their chemistry at all because of the no. fact. I think, like, like we said, in, uh, Billy, in, uh, Bill, Bill, Emilio Estevez's character doesn't feel like a your eighties hero because I mean, it's, it's he, a he's, no, he doesn't not, feel like it. No, you're right. He's not enough of a uh, to, for the main. He's not enough of a main character to be the main character. He's no. 
yeah i mean yeah you know it, it's it, it is it does feel out of place i mean i'm just thinking i'm just looking at um it, i just had a look for posters um and, oh, and, and posters? Came, for the movie yeah and came across this one um oh let's have a look when that post from what you were saying about it, expecting it to mainly be a chase movie with the the goblin yeah. headed truck um so i just had a look for posters and that image is pretty much it does that come up yep um which is what? essentially hang on that's what i mean i've saw loads yeah. of that. it <laughs> looks like a chase movie it looks like he gets so chased is, across a county is emilio estevez being chased by the goblin headed truck and the green goblin headed truck isn't as big a part of it as you think it is either barely barely in it but that is kind of one of the defining images of this movie i think if you mention maximum overdrive to somebody and they've seen it they'll go the one with the truck with the goblin head on it yeah but it's barely in it it's barely in it which it, begs you, the question god yeah wh why go for something so visually striking if you're hardly gonna man it, you it, really google maximum overdrive poster everything it, mm -hmm. 90% of it is the Green Goblin. Um, yeah. There's one uh, that's like a normal 18-wheeler truck with a body coming out the grill. But the majority are... And Which it, I think is the official art for it. The one that I think that is the official art. The one with the... Where it's just the semi-truck. The semi -truck, yeah. Mm, with like Stephen the, King at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, but, they, but yeah, I mean, I guess it is set up to be the main antagonist, and it's the sort of final boss at the end of the movie. But oh man, look at the Japanese one. The Japanese posters <laughs> always rule. Look at this one. It's just done away with, and it's it, it's done away with. Yeah, that's great. And the artwork, the artwork is really cool. Like, there's a lot of um, like painted painted posters. Like, these, most of these are painted posters. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's. But it's done, it's done away with. It's just done away with too quickly. At the end, like. I was because I was watching. Yes. There's a scene where I can't remember again. Can't remember which character it is. It's a character. <laughs> uh, and he's like lighting a cigarette or something, thinking that everything's safe. And then the truck. We see the truck behind him. And the truck revs and and they just shoot you with a rocket and it blows up and that's it. Oh Done. yeah, at the Done end. Now, lads. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, we again, we didn't need to go through the whole plot because it's very straightforward. But after they escape the gas station, they because uh, Bill, Bill's been talking about this island where there's no technology apparently that they want to get to. Just I mean, what is that? Sounds great, mate. <laughs> um, if you've if if you've the, maybe you should hang on a bit and watch the end of Dawn of the Dead remake because when they get to that <laughs> island, it's not safe. Um, they get to There's the be an electric toothbrush on that island. There's loads of them just <laughs> coming out of the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, that would be a better film. <laughs> I'd buy um, but when they get to the harbour and they get the boat, uh, yeah, the, the guy you're talking about, he sees a, de a dead body in a car, but he sees a ring on her finger and he goes to mm. get it. And then That's suddenly it. the truck is there. Like, how have they I not mean, noticed? Who... How, exactly, that's exactly the point I was going to make. Who who is that oblivious that a, a giant semi-truck semi with a goblin head on the front, a giant green goblin head on the front of it? It's not just They're not very conspicuous. Up on you. Yeah. It's the most <laughs> conspicuous massive lorry that's possible. Sneaks up on him. And then they just they just pull out, yeah, they just pull out that trusty rocket See, launcher and it's done. That's the problem with Arctic eighteen wheelers, they just they just pop out of nowhere. They just come out of nowhere. You can't Um I just found this. Look, this is the VHS um cover art. I mean that's not even the biggest bailout of that film though. This Look at film, that. Rather. I'm just waiting for this to load. Um this is awful. This 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 is the cover art for the video oh. the VHS. Look yeah, at that romance novel. That's that. It does look like a romance novel. That's yeah. really bad. That's really, really, really bad. It's <laughs> horrific, isn't it? I yeah. mean, I guess, I guess, I think like like we've joked about it earlier, but the the title 
maximum overdrive is a huge oversell for the amount of yeah actual action that's that's in this movie. I expect more. Uh, and but that cover kind of sums it up nicely because there's slightly more fra- of the frame given over to the the love interest to the romantic subplot yeah. than the actual truck action that that we promised. Um there is uh yeah it's it's just ridiculous. There is a really good line in it though that just made me laugh so much for how cheesy and I think cheesy is a oh good my word. God. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait. Go on. I no, I'm not gonna say it, but I'm just getting my notes up because I think I wrote down exactly what you're about to say. Go for it. All right, all right. Is it? Do you want to rock and roll with me, puss bag? No, it wasn't that. <laughs> no, it wasn't that one. But that's much okay. better. That's much better. So that that was the um, that was the salesman when he's um, oh, God. Because the the garbage truck dumps a lot of stuff on his car, doesn't it? Yes. And that's what lures yeah. him out. So he's he shouts at what he I guess what he thinks is the driver of that truck. Yeah. Do you want to rock and roll with me, puss bag? Nobody in the history of the world ever says things like they do in movies like this. Nobody's ever said that line as like a threat to anybody. What sort of response would you get get from that? Someone that if there was someone driving that truck, they go, "Yeah, I'll rock and roll with you. Let's fucking go, puss bag." Like, hey, I don't that's, know. That's not how but, a human speaks. It's not how humans speak, is it? It's not how anybody genuinely. I mean, I can't imagine anybody uttering that phrase, even ironically. To, to, it's just, it's so 80s. So it's a sort of that, that, what we think of as quintessentially cheesy 80s line. Cheesy that, and trying to be edgy. But like something that like, well, one of the Breakfast Club, I'd say, for example, or Revenge of the Nerds, or, you know, it's got that Amelia kind Estevez. of... It is Emilio Estevez again. Yeah. But yeah, you can imagine. Well, I think what is it? Something he calls Judd <laughs> Miller Westfest calls Judd Nelson a wasteoid <laughs> <laughs> in Breakfast Club. Or <laughs> something else. Scuzzball and a wasteoid. And you think, yeah, that's that's an eighties line that nobody's 80s, ever said. Eighties <laughs> slur eighties slurs are rubbish. <laughs> Go on, what was your line then? So I, it, yeah, I thought one. Because the I only, I only thought it was the same quote I had because uh, you were just talking about the title of the film, um, because they do mention that in the film and it's Brett when she's talking. Uh, it's before he, Bill goes, "If I put my arm around your shoulder, would you like then you know bat me off?" Sort of thing. And she's like, "No, oh, right. you know, come here, big boy." But before that, she she's at the window pondering and she's like. Uh, she says something, but then goes, "That's what I was doing before every machine went into maximum overdrive." Oh, God, he I said it. He said it. He said the film. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the term "maximum overdrive" being used to describe some sort of machine that say malfunctioned or gone wrong. Like um, I don't know. I I use a I use a, uh, a saw, a table saw at work. It malfunctions. Oh my. Guys, the the saw's gone into maximum overdrive. <laughs> like I, the the car's overheating <laughs> outside. The, the you, car's going into maximum am, overdrive. I am gonna start using that phrase. You know when I told you about our new Hoover that we got? All right, bra- let's go on about a new Hoover. Brag, brag, brag yeah, about yeah, our yeah, new. I'm just I'm throwing. You got it in a shark, there. didn't you? You got a shark. Just. Uh, it is a shark. Yeah, oh. yeah. We we had the conversation about it. You oh, I know right? we did. I'm just jealous. Well, that's got. You're gonna be even extra jealous now. But it's got um it's got a little trigger on it for like a power boost. Mm-hmm. If you've got a particularly stubborn bit of cat fluff you need to hoover up or whatever. Well from now on, that trigger it's is gonna maximum. be known as the maximum <laughs> overdrive trigger. Yes. <laughs> Stand back, love, I'm putting the hoover into maximum <laughs> overdrive. Oh. <laughs> it's like nitrous yeah. oxide in it. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like <laughs> Hit the nose. Yeah, hit, hit the, the nose on, on the Hoover. Put it into uh, maximum overdrive. <laughs> get rid of that pasta. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that was that, that rice that I dropped on the floor. It's ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Maximum overdrive is an ACDC title, uh, album title, isn't it? I mean, I don't know if it actually is, but it it 
it's it that sort of should phrase. Be. Yeah. Yeah. If it isn't, it should be. Um, um and yeah, it is it is a phrase that like you say, nobody's ever said. No. Nope. Ever. No. Nope. In fact, I've just um, I've just googled metal uh, music albums called Maximum Overdrive. How many? <laughs> I mean, enough. There's one by by a band called Cat Rapes Dog. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. Um, the were they Scandinavian? The the techno outfit from the nineties, Too Unlimited. They had an album called Maximum Overdrive. Vaguely know uh, that name. A band called Metal Detector, <laughs> but Detector is spelt with a K. Of course, Detector. it is. Detector, like edgy. Strong Bad. So like much. Strong Bad edgy. came up with it. Strong Bad. Um, oh, it's not an album. Sorry, it's a song by a Belgian Dutch Euro dance band, Two Unlimited. European. Yeah. So yeah, th- there's a few. The Streetwalking Cheaters. Anyway, yes. So I, th- I think it probably it's definitely is. a metal. Yeah, it's so it's yeah. metal. It's very well that metal. sort of cock rock eighties. Yeah, bands like Steel Panther or ACDC. Yeah, or any one of those sorts of bands. Um. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is very slapstick. It's not. It's, is it really a horror film? I mean, it's a comedy horror film, isn't it? But I can't decide it's if it's horror. intentionally comedy. No, either. I think it's. It's like, I, I don't think I would call Return of Living Dead a horror comedy. No. Um, I would, I'd say it's, it's a goofy horror, mm-hmm. but it, it it's a horror film. Uh, the, at the, this is, this is a sci-fi with, sci-fi film with horror elements, I would say. I mean, it's horror because it's Stephen King, isn't it? Yeah, that's what, I think. It's, got his, it's the name. It's cause it's got I, the name, I think that's it? what it is. I yeah. mean... The, there's clearly nothing remotely scary about it. Um, no, it's not particularly gory. It's not, but it's it comes back to the, the debate of gory versus violent. It's quite violent. That like the deaths are quite yeah. violent at the time. They're not cut. They're not cut very quickly. Like when people get run over, they get run over. Mm, mm. Um, you know, you kill the kid. That's that's a big yeah. deal. It's a big deal, and a big you, deal. it wasn't a shot of he's already been killed. And it was like, no, that steamroller is still going mm-hmm. and you're still seeing it. But for the most part, yeah, it's not, it's not gory. Um, it's hard, I guess it'd be hard to be gory because you, the trucks can just keep running people over. That's it. There's no other, there's no, there's nothing new with the kills. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah that is true. Because they focus on trucks as the only machines yeah. pretty much. And a gun, like the few people get shot. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah that um, one, that strange gun trolley thing. It's, yeah, it's very it's a odd like little a, vehicle that. It's like something that it's got like a it's, it's like a trailer with a BAR on it that would be towed by an army truck. Yeah, but it's also Somewhere. got a steering wheel on it. It's, <laughs> it's, very, it's a and weird no little. Seats. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no seats. It's got a steering wheel on a horn, but a tow bar. It very it's it's very weird little contraption. Yeah, and I don't know how how they managed to be held up hostage by it so, quite so long because they could have just ducked under the gun, like there's like when when they make their great escape and Bill like hits it and drops the grenade on it, like they could have just sat down on the trailer. The gun can't pivot up and down; it can only sort of swivel in a three sixty arc. We just <laughs> sat down on it, <laughs> and also unbolted the gun. We win. How much? <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> how much the power, it. how much power um does it's now now self-awareness have when it turns could you just hold it have you got is it so strong that you couldn't hold it and it would just, well he manages he manages to like swap yeah it, it, it swivels so, could probably you, well far easier than a real one would presumably because it swings like a go like this <laughs> No, no, 
No. no. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Um, uh, quick note. I, I need a model. I, I, I need a model of that truck because it is cool. The Green Goblin. I feel yeah. like it's a cool little okay. rock. Okay, I feel I feel like that should exist. I feel like that exists. Somewhere. If we're looking, if I'm I'm, I'm thinking of, of, we normally talk about, um, oh, is this film on 4K? Is it got a nice collector's edition? You know what? I feel like uh, all I can find is a nice steelbook, uh, Blu-ray steelbook. Um, oh no really? 4K. Yeah. I um, oh, there is there is a Matchbox truck. Oh, seventy quid. Oh, Ooh. where's that on? Yeah, movie trucks, maximum overdrive, the Green Goblin truck. I feel like the the Goblin... I, is this somebody just trying to... Because it's the Happy Toys branding on the side, but the Goblin head is very small. It's you not... Look, you're looking at one on eBay? I've just... It, this is just an image search on Google, and it's the first hit. Yeah, the one with the big red head. Um, is it the quite one? Quite possibly. It's well, like I say, it's, it's yeah. a small head in relation to what it should be. It yeah. is literally like somebody's painted up a truck and stuck a the head of a action figure on it. Yeah, I feel like these would be custom toys rather than officially yeah. licensed. Um, which is a shame, but I feel like it would be a it would be a really cool horror prop to have. Um, yeah, that that's definitely the the eBay one I'm seeing. That's not great. Yeah. Oh, there are uh, some custom. I mean, there are some people that have done. Yeah, like full size customs. The original um, was like found in a shed somewhere randomly. Really? Yeah, it like it went missing, and then it just randomly popped up. Um, kind of like the Falcor, the Wish Dragon from a Luck Dragon from Neverending Story. I think yeah. a similar thing happened with that. They just uh... oh, it was a, yeah a tweet. It's just rotting in a shed. Uh, not in a shed, in a, just in a yard somewhere. Assuming assuming yeah. that that's the goblin head from the... In fact, it's not. I can see. Well, maybe it is. Maybe the jaw's just broken. It's not open mouth. But uh, there can't be that many giant green goblin heads. No. Hanging about. That's got to be the one. If they didn't have this in the film, this truck... I mean, it wouldn't make it better or worse because, like you said earlier, it has doesn't have much of an impact in the film. It's just there for the visual. Mm. It's just there for the like, oh, this looks really cool. That's it. And you take you take the the front end of that truck off, the the goblin face. It's just another truck. There's nothing else on the truck. truck. There's nothing else on, no. on the truck. It's just the face. I so, mean, it's a, it's it's, it's, it's a toy truck. At some point, they could have had all the toys coming oh, out. Oh God, gotcha, yeah, yeah, going mad. Yeah, yeah, oh, gotcha. Um, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I think that's why it's got a huge goblin head on the front of it. It's because it's this, uh, because it is this toy truck, uh, you know, toy delivery truck. But did Marvel know about this? Presumably Marvel knew about this. They must no. have, they must have had to give the okay for them to slap a, because it is the Spider-Man villain. Oh, it's Green it's Goblin. the Green Goblin, 100%. yeah, without doubt, yeah. So Marvel um, must have had to okay that. Uh, let's have a look what we got here because I didn't actually look about this. Apparently, Marvel Comics approved of the Green Goblin imagery being used this way, so it was not accidental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they would have, they would have had to have done. I mean, yeah. I mean, commercially, this was a flop, and like I say, you know, Spielberg, uh, Spielberg, um, Stephen King never directed another movie, um, but. This did have a positive impact on the career of ACDC. Like they they had like number ones or top tens and stuff. Like their their career was flagging a little bit, and then when they did the soundtrack for this, it it gave that them like it. a a boost back into the charts at the time. Yeah, <laughs> after the film came out, they vowed to never do another soundtrack again, and obviously that didn't last. But um. For a brief period there, they they did really well with music sales on the back of this until people actually saw the film. I think. Oh, they've got this got something out of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least they got something out of it. Um, mm. I'm sure they didn't get many residuals out of it. Um, 
you mentioned earlier uh i think we, we we glossed over this very quickly but yeah there's a rocket launcher in this film where where do the weapons come from so the, this is obviously a bit ag just glazed over yeah the 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 boss of the said gas station is mm-hmm. quite a sleaze bag he produces a rocket launcher i remember that bit. yeah and then maid takes it and runs outside yeah i think they uh refer to the fact they've got they've got some it's even like gun smuggling or something like that again I probably I'm gonna say because so. by the end they've all got machine guns. Yeah, they go into the basement of the owner of this gas station. Into the basement, and he's got just racks of guns and artillery, like weaponry everywhere. Ah, uh, okay. So he's running an illicit gun. Running I think operation. it is. I may be wrong. That's not, lucky. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying 100 percent, folks, but I think that's what it was. But um, yeah, when he just whipped out the rocket launch, I'm like, okay. Uh, gas station only has a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just casually, and no one seems to bat an eye about it. No, no one, no one seems to be. I mean, I guess that if it helps them survive, fine. Well, who cares? I mean, but as we established, <laughs> nobody really bats an eye about anything. No, if it's overly an overly long time in this movie. I mean, I guess mid eighties there was a lot of Vietnam surplus kicking around. Everybody had a rocket launcher in the eighties. <laughs> Don't That's move for take. rocket launchers. That's my take on that. <laughs> um, something else that we just skipped over, and oh, yeah. I, I do want to go back and mention it because it made me laugh so much. But the very first, the re- the opening scene of this is the uh, after we get the little title card bit with it, that tells us yeah. the, about the comet. We have the bank and the bank sign that is just You're an flashing. No, well, it's fuck you is on the the bank building, and then we have the guy going to the the cash point. And the cash point is calling him an arsehole. Yeah. Now that guy is Stephen King. Yeah. That's the Stephen King cameo. But doesn't he look like Elton John when he first appeared on screen? Just go back and have a look. When he first appeared on screen, screen, I was like, "Is that? Is I was like, is that Elton John?" And then when I realized Texas Glass, I was like, "No, of course not. It's Stephen King. Why the hell would it be Elton John?" But for, there was a brief, like, couple really? of seconds where I thought. This is Elton John. Let me get my perfectly legal um, stream that I found the film on. And uh, perfectly legal. Yeah, it was not an easy film to track down this. No, here we go. It was not an easy film. I could have sworn it was on Amazon Prime until very, very recently. Yeah, it says this video is not available on Mm. Amazon Prime. Um, And I was banking on it and I had to find a a less than uh, legit copy. Uh, he looks, yeah, he looks like he's just come straight from the, uh, I'm still standing video. Yeah, done it. <laughs> a bit of, uh, Johnny Depp in Fear and Love in Las Vegas as well with the glasses. But yeah, that is Elton oh, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me laugh so much. My first three notes are Stephen King, cameo, <laughs> cash point, calls him an asshole, looking a lot like Elton John. <laughs> ACDC, sarcastic newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's that is how I hadn't even clocked that. Um, I'm also I, I just just saw the opening. To I, I was getting, I was getting thing and predator vibes at the beginning. I was thinking, oh, we're starting off in space again. Is this going to be like alien ship crashes to Earth again? Thankfully not. We got the uh, premise instantly. Well, uh, you say that, I do but say do that. you remember the end? Tap yeah, card. I've got it right here, yep. <laughs> um, let's read that out. So they... let's just let's just do a little a little recap of events. Yes, what, you know, go for happens. it. Go for so it. So we have we have the 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 escape the diner. They sneak across town to head to the mysterious technology free island of Gotta get to Atlantis. It. Um, they blow up the goblin truck and they jump on a boat, which happens to be a sailboat, and weirdly cuts through that rope and couldn't. Um, untied that knot. I'm pretty sure he could have untied that knot if he had tried. But anyway, gets a, gets a knife. Bill gets a knife out, cuts the rope, and, and off they sail into the into the sunset. And then, just before the credits roll, we yeah. get another text card on screen, which reads: Two days after a large UFO was destroyed in space by a Russian, quote unquote weather satellite which happened to be equipped with a laser cannon and class 4 nuclear missiles <laughs> uh, 
It, oh, he was on all the coke right now. All of the coke. <laughs> two days later. Just two, two days. A two Russian days later. quote unquote weather satellite ha- just happened happened to be equipped with a laser cannon and class four nuclear missiles. Hey, it was the mid eighties, you know, we were you No know, Cold War stuff. Russia was spying on everybody. Approximately six days later, the Earth passed beyond the tail of uh oh, this is the comet's name, Rhea Dash M. Mm. Exactly as predicted. The survivors of the Dixie Boy. Oh, there's a bit I'm missing here. Survivors of the Dixie Boy are still, are still survivors. Died on their way back to their home planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because talk about bailout ending. We just get this title card. Oh, two days later, we shot down a UFO. So it was aliens. It's just, what? What are you doing? I think I would have just preferred radioactive dust from a comet. Yeah. Just yeah, leave, yeah, yeah. It, leave it. It's bizarre like that. Right at the end. It's like, oh, man, I wish we had some money to actually put some aliens. I'm going to make it aliens. Yeah, fuck it. Because it was... aliens, why not? <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <sighs> so that was tapping away. God. Finish that. Yeah, just two days later. <laughs> And it does have, yeah, real poochie dad on his way back to his home. It really vibe. does. <laughs> and he, then the credits roll, and that's Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> he poochied the hell out of this film. <laughs> this is a poochie film. It is. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, Maximum Overdrive. I mean, shout out to Mike at Retro Sesh for suggesting this Yes, one. that's where it came from in the first place, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, and I had seen it before. I knew exactly what I was, what I was in for. Um, <laughs> we're going to do some more Stephen King at some point and we're going to do something that he did not direct <laughs> thankfully we'll yeah, do something yeah. better <laughs> um, but like I said so if you've not seen it before watch it, give it a watch but if you're looking for something a better yeah. film about machines going haywire then check out Choppy Mall or The Simpsons uh, Treehouse of Horror that's a great shout great shout but at the same time i think it's a fair recommendation this film it's only oh, an yeah. hour and, it's an hour and a half i think hour it's fair half. to just i mean maybe you don't want to after what everything we've just said yeah, yeah but yeah. <laughs> i'd still say watch it just tick it off um what well, I, I one more point i just wanted to say i feel like i don't know maybe all their most of the budget went into hiring the trucks getting because there's a lot of trucks in this film mm-hmm. and I would say the gas station, it was either an old gas station. The whole area was old, old, old one they, they bought and just did up for the film, or it's a set, because they destroyed the hell out of oh, it. Oh, yeah, the there's end. a lot of big, big power And it, it looks film. great at the end, mm-hmm. the destruction. Like, they they keep the cameras on a lot of the destruction. Mm-hmm. So you, you see, like, a lot of the the, um, the roofing of like, where, where you fill up, like, start to explode and collapse. No, not quick cuts. And it looks good. It looks good as a destruction. It feels like you know, the end of the shooting. It's like, right, we're going to blow everything up now. And they had a lot of money in their pyro budget, it seems. Yeah, they um, definitely did. Oh, I mean, probably as much as an average ACDC concert. That's true, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and one final. Here's, here's a nice, nice way to end it. Nice positive note. There was one really nice scene that remind. I'm bringing it back, reminded me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh great! Yeah, go on then. <laughs> it's about it's a transitional shot. It's the, uh, the sun setting over like a, a, a woodland area, a silhouetted woodland area, and the sky is so orange. And it just reminded me. I mean, that sort of orange. It reminded me oh, of yeah, yeah. Uh, where the sun is setting. It's a tra- again a transitional shot in TCM. The sun is setting. The sky is just burning orange, and everything below it is just black silhouette. It, it just reminded me of that. That was all. But it was a nice shot. Um, yeah, that's my that's my two cents at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> well, any you know any oh. any further plug of Texas Chainsaw Mask is all right by me. Oh, we'll get it there. Uh, yeah, no, like yeah, yeah. Watch it if you've not seen it. Like, check it out. Check it out at least once. But don't don't buy it because you'll probably never watch it again. Once is enough. Once is enough. But yeah, if you if you like, um, you know crazy crazy movies about 
Haywire Machines. Check out Choppy Mall as well. And check out Jewel. If you like films about menacing trucks, Steven Spielberg's Jewel. Yeah. This is... Yeah, Early Choppy on, Mall that's and much Jewel. earlier. Uh, Jewel yeah. is... I believe it's 70s film, that Jewel is 71, it? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but that's actually a, a person in the truck, right? It is. It yeah. Is. Yeah. But it's... Um, uh, but yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't think I've got much more to say. No, really. I, I think I think I, I pretty feel... we've pretty much wrapped it up. I think um, we put the I'm podcast just... into maximum overdrive. And, uh, just checking. We got there. Um, just checking my notes. But uh... for you, for you, I, I would highly recommend for you and for everyone out there watch Feast. Um, it's, oh well, yeah, it's, I'm it's gonna, so I'm add that to my list. It's so fun. Um, There's three of them as well, apparently. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you now, they get worse. Yeah. <laughs> they get I'm really saying, bad. I, but, I don't think I need it to be told. <laughs> um, yeah, they get they get pretty rough. Uh, the first one is great fun, though. Great fun. Um, it does look good. It feels like a standalone. It could be a, it, well, should have been a standalone film. It should have been. Um, but that, if you, want a, if you want a better, let's say, siege horror movie, watch Feast and Tremors. Oh, Jason Muse is in it. Uh, Jason Mewes, Jason Mewes. Yes. Yeah, and no, Henry there's, Rollins. Yeah, there's some big names in it, yeah. And um, the bartender. Oh, fucking hell. Who plays the bartender? I completely forget. Uh, he Is it Don? It's not Don Johnson. It's... Uh, Somebody called Tar- Clue... Clue Gulager. Clue Gulager. Of course it's Clue Gulager. Gulager. He's, Clue Gulager is from, um, from... Clue Gulager is from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and uh, Return of the Living oh, Dead. Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. Clue Gulager, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's great fun. Right. Huh? Uh, yeah, no, the, the trailer, that, yeah. the trailer does not do it justice. So do not watch the trailer. Okay, I won't. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, that about wraps it up. So, what have we got next, Tom? What have we got next? Um, little film called Society. Uh, so until next time, then, Ooh, folks. Um, yeah. the, I am. I, I look for anyone that listens to this podcast. We appreciate all of you and thank you very much. If you've not seen Society. Um, uh, there's a reason why I'm 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 keeping very quiet about the film because I want you to go and find it and watch it before we talk about it. This it's... film specifically, more than any other film, do not watch a trailer, do not read any synopsis, do not read plot. It's a horror film that I would not advise watching in a Costa, you know, or or in your lunch break <laughs> or somewhere. <laughs> Just go and watch it and then come back to us when we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, society. Excellent. Yeah. Um, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> that is. So that's next week. We live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> that will be next week. And then the following week, um, I believe is August. We're, we're a week behind the schedule, but it's fine. We're, we're just going to include it in August. Um, we will be catching up with old Frankie and the Mummy in a double feature. Um, our double our, Boris Karloff Universal yeah. movies continuation. Yes, the Mummy, Monsters of Universal, Wonderful. and then to cap off this, I guess, last session of the drag cast in August will be, of course, The Exorcist. The Exorcist. With the poster the right way up, maybe I should just do the thumbnail for The Exorcist ninety degrees and fuck everyone. I think you should. I think you should just as a little yeah, a little dig. And uh, but that's but is that much to a vulgar display of power? Uh, it could be. It could be a bit meta. Um, and then to cap off, uh, after that will be Return of the Living Dead because it's Return of the Living Dead, and I think I think we'll try and. If we get time, if you get time, if I get time, if we're both free at the same time, we'll try and fit in our trade new some new trailer reactions when they pop out in the next few weeks, I believe. Mm-hmm. For Saw and the Exorcist. And maybe in August we get a little a few games in on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game. Oh yeah, not long. Not long. Three that. weeks, I think, now until that comes out. Eighteenth of August. Eighteenth mm-hmm. of August. So yeah. And then after Return of the Dead, a little break, and we'll be back mid September onwards with I mean, man, I have we don't so know. Have don't we know. That far ahead? We, we don't know. That far ahead. We don't know. But I have, so, oh man, I have so many what I want to do in mind, and mm. September onwards 
it's, it's, it's good time of the year. It's winding down. It's autumn. It's horror season in my eyes. Mm. Like, oh yeah, there's, there's a lot of definitely. There's a lot of good stuff that, yeah, I, I think it's gonna. I think we're gonna have some good times. So, um, awesome. yep. Do check us out on the Dreadcast at Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Podbean, and YouTube, and on Instagram and Twitter at the underscore Dreadcast. And what's that email again? That email again is the dreadcast pod at gmail.com. What's that? So yeah, feel free to drop us some uh recommendations, some yep. suggestions. Just say hi at the dreadcast pod at gmail.com. Thank you again, Fun the How, for your amazing letter. Uh keep sending them in and we'll read them and we'll discuss and we'll have a chat via the podcast. Uh, Until next time. I, th- I think that is everything, isn't it? I think that is everything. Yeah, let's, let's stay, stay spooky. Stay spooky. Yeah.